Hi everyone, welcome back to the Erring Austin YouTube channel. My name is Austin and I just got finished watching House of the Dragon episode one. First of all, I just wanna say how amazing it is to be back in the world of Game of Thrones. Not only that, but seeing like Westeros again, specifically King's Landing in this episode and just seeing how everything is being ran by the Targaryen Empire. To be fully transparent here, this was not a show that I was really looking forward to, mostly because of the backlash that Game of Thrones season seven and season eight had. To this day, I still say Game of Thrones is one of my favorite TV shows. I just don't think anything has ever really met the hype or the buzz around, you know, another TV show since. And my gosh, the, the world building alone in Game of Thrones, it's, it's such a highlight to the whole entire show. And because of that world building, we now have House of the Dragon. Even though Game of Thrones didn't land on its feet, I firmly believe that it's one of like the greatest stories that has ever been told in television. But because of the way Game of Thrones finished off, it kind of ruined the rewatchability. I used to watch Game of Thrones once every year. I think I've seen the series in total maybe six or seven times, but ever since the last two seasons, I just kind of completely stopped doing that, which is why I have to say I was not really looking forward to House of the Dragon whatsoever. But honestly though, that's such like a healthy mindset when you're approaching a new TV show. You don't wanna go in overhyped and be disappointed and you don't wanna go in hating it and just hate on it the whole time. You kinda just wanna go into it blind and then be surprised as to what hits you. For example, episode one of House of the Dragon, we got to see lots of perspective from the Targaryen Empire. And wow, I didn't realize the Targaryens were like this messed up, like this early on. And so seeing characters like Viserys the First or Daemon Targaryen or even Rhaenyra, I, I, sorry, I apologize in advance if I'm butchering these names whatsoever. Rhaenyra really reminds me of a mix of like Daenerys and maybe like Arya Stark. And it's kind of charming in a way to reintroduce us to the world of Game of Thrones through a character who shares those kinds of attributes. She's rebellious and wants to explore just like Arya, but she also has like a really strong mindset, just like Daenerys Targaryen did. The character who shocked me the most though was probably Daemon Targaryen, just because of like the controversies that he caused throughout the whole entirety of the first episode alone, which goes to say the pacing of this episode and I assume this series compared to earlier works of Game of Thrones, it's vastly different. Take for instance, the turmoil that's already building between Daemon Targaryen and the House of Hightower. That alone is causing so many elements to be set up later for this season. The show is setting up like these building blocks for later. And I think that is, it's such a key aspect in any first episode. So it really gives me high hopes to see like what the rest of the series is gonna be like. And I was kind of already a little bit excited to see Daemon's character get the shit kicked out of him. I need to see Damon go down <laughs> or maybe have like a redemptive kind of storyline much like that of Jamie Lannister but but then ultimately ends in a more fulfilling and better way. <laughs> Visually, I thought the whole entire episode looked really good. I mean, like everything from the lighting to the camera work, I was just really brought back into Game of Thrones. They really just nailed it with the tone. Like it was Perfect. It was it was perfect. Other than the pacing, but I, I think I'm fine with that. I think, you know, this is a new show. Something needs to be a little bit different. I think it needs to hit hard, move quicker, but also tell an interesting story within at least one to three seasons. Now, I don't know how long the show is going to run to, but I think it's going to be more of a condensed storyline compared to the Song of Ice and Fire books. So I would say that House of the Dragon episode one primarily focuses on succession in this episode and really focuses on the issues between Daemon, Ceres, and the Hand of the King. One aspect of the show that really confuses me would be that of Daemon's character and kind of his motives and his goals. Because at first it's like, okay, he doesn't really care to be on the Iron Throne. And then you see him like accumulate all this power and he kind of, and he kind of goes in and abuses it. And when I say kind of, I mean, he utterly destroys literal lives. And so his decision to publicly speak out against his brother and ruin his chances of getting to the Iron Throne, it's a little bit confusing on why he did that, why he couldn't just keep his, you know, mouth shut and, you know, talk, you know, after the fact that maybe like his brother passes or, you know, once he's finally claimed the Iron Throne. He must have some kind of ulterior motives because at the very beginning of the episode, they even mention like the only weakness like the Targaryens really have at this given time is their own family. So something is definitely going on with Daemon. He has some kind of agenda. Viserys the first, I think he lost the most this episode. He lost his wife, he lost his son. Meanwhile, his brother is making fun of the whole situation that he's in and he has to cast him out. So he's really losing essentially everyone here. And just 
just everything that he's worked to achieve just comes like falling down on top of him. I honestly feel for the guy. I really hated to see him make this horrific decision to either sacrifice both his wife and the child or to hold down his wife and save the child. I mean, to make that kind of decision, I mean, I, watching that was hard. But by the end of episode one, I think Viserys the first really comes to realize like, oh, what he's doing is wrong and he's gonna go a different route. And so Viserys the first, he decides to make his daughter, Rhaenerys, the ultimate heir to the throne, casting out his brother, as I said before. Which then makes me kind of feel bad for Rhaenyra because like she's this free spirited girl who just wants to travel the world and eat cake with her best friend. And that's just, and that's just so wholesome. You want to see her do what she wants to do. But now she has all this weight and pressure on her to be a queen someday. You know, the first queen of Westeros. That is a lot to put on someone, especially a character who just, you know, lost her mother and is seeing her uncle kind of descend into this, you know, chaos. I can already tell that this series is going to use a lot of foreshadowing and in a really good way because Rhaenyra's mother already mentioned in the very beginning, like, oh, I've already birthed, like, X amount of kids and they all didn't really make it. So I don't want to, you know, bear another child and have the same thing happen. With later down the line, same thing happening. And Viserys loses his son, you know, the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. Speaking of the Iron Throne, it got, got a little bit sharper. The swords are kind of like cascading like out the sides of the chair and it looks very menacing <laughs> to say the least. One thing that I would really like to see more of is the people closest to the king I don't know all of their names just yet off the top of my head, but I kind of want to see more of them develop as characters and feel more of the turmoil between them, you know, Damon, and maybe some of the king's decisions and maybe how they're using the king to deploy their own status. I think that's gonna go a long way in making the show work and really fleshing out those side characters and seeing like how they also kind of influence and build the world that is Game of Thrones. Guys, I, I, hate, I hate to be so optimistic. I hate it, absolutely hate it. But I think Game of Thrones might be back and I'm really, really excited for it. Like, I have goosebumps right now. Like, I, I oof. I'm ecstatic to see where this goes and I think it's gonna be good. I I'm, I have high hopes. I, I'm, I'm positive about this. We fans of Game of Thrones, we need a win. <laughs> we need a win for sure. I think House of the Dragon episode one really landed for me. There are a few like maybe nitpicks here and there, you know, just maybe like some of like the dragons and the frame rate. Did any of you guys notice that? I don't think it was like that big of a deal because like most of the scenes, it was completely fine. Other than that and some underbaked characters, I think House of the Dragon is really showing some promise here and I'm looking forward to episode two. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Um, if you guys really enjoyed the content, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. That really helps out with the channel. And also if you guys wanna see more content from me, highly recommend subscribing. Uh, that really helps out the channel and it lets you guys see like whenever I'm posting more videos. We are trying to hit a goal of 500 subscribers by the end of 2022. House of Dragons, what did you guys think about it? Leave your comments down below and let me know. And I'll go ahead and see you guys next week for episode two.